Markalov is the best CS 1.6 sniper and a Navi legend. When HLTV presented its debut top 20 ranking in 2011, it was Igor Markalov who took the first place. After switching to CS GO, everything changed. Markalov simply became one of the bottle, and Navi's dominance on the pro scene could be forgotten. Today we decided to recall 10 of Markalov's greatest highlights, an AWP ace, a Kazakh dream team, and a trophy clutch. Let's go! Kazakh Dragon when Navi moved to CSGO, they started losing a lot. Edward and Markalov didn't like this, and in July 2013, they joined the mega ambitious Astana Dragons project. Right before the first major, both Navi and AD went to the Tech Labs Cup 2013 finals. At first, Navi knocked out the team of former teammates, and then Markalov and company took revenge on the offenders in the lower bracket final. At Inferno, Igor showed an exemplary game of a sniper for CT, making four laps. Sneaky Beaky Endurance is a very important characteristic for a sniper. There are situations when you have to show you're cool. You don't just make one or two moves. You take advantage of your opponent's mistake of not checking your position and close the round in a solo. Such a moment occurred during the legendary WCG 2010 final between Navi and MTW. The Danes did not check the niche at the exit of the big house, and they paid the price. Markalov took four, winning the round in solo. Zeus plus Markalov. WEG is another cool tournament from Korea, like WCG. It brought together all the top players under one roof who fought for a solid prize pool of approximately $80,000. Navi was one of the favorites, but frag executors stood in their way and sent them to the bottom grid, where they met MTW. This match was very intense with a lot of highlights. During the B-Rush, Zeus and Markalov were two for four. Markalov had already made one frag beforehand, but wanted all four. So the guys gathered their will and took this clutch. Defending Lord William's Castle Gux is a true legend of the Swedish CS scene. From 2009 to 2012, he represented Fnatic, which was one of the best CS 1.6 teams that regularly fought alongside NAVI for prizes at top championships. But when CSGO came out, Gux decided to finish his studies at school. He returned to CSGO in 2017, when he assembled the European mix of Gux and Friends, for which Woxic and Issa managed to play. Somehow, between qualifiers for various tournaments, Gux and Friends met flipside tactics with Markalov as part of the 25th season of the ESCA. The guys pitted Cobble, where they fought hard for every round until Markalov made an ace and took a 1-3 clutch in the 27th round. After this turning point, Flipside took the map to victory with a score of 16-13. How it works, to be completely honest with you, but I'll, I'll definitely check up with the admins whenever I have a chance. 
This could be exactly what they're looking for. He finds one kill on Percy, but I think that's a bit premature to be completely honest with you. And well that he's gonna go down to Issa. It's now all on Markolov. One on three. Make that a one on two. He spots one of the players jumping down from balcony as well. And Voxic needs to go for the bomb plant. Will be able to do it. With just enough time left. Markolov already with a quad kill. Now looking for the ace clutch. As he's up against Voxic in a one on one. Voxic on 100 HP. Markolov on 74 AK-47 against M4. And Markilov with the A secures the round for flip side. 5-100. Another highlight from the 25th season of ESCA. This time Flipside met the famous Turkish tag Space Soldiers, where Xantarez was playing at the time. He, however, did not help the team to win. Flipside won at the cash with a crushing score of 16-5. Markilov, on the other hand, seeded the team with a pistol. He finished his triple of laps with a 1-2 clutch, first killing his opponent on the 9, and then beating Paz with 5 health points. By Santeras, that's a triple, looking for even more now. But finally, he will go down Paz. In the meantime, takes care of Blade. Markilov left alone, 5 HP. Gonna be a tough one for him, but he still managed to connect the headshot. No enter for Samurai. Flipside and Markolov's path to IEM Katowice 2017 was difficult. After passing the open qualifiers, the team got into the closed qualifiers where there were Navi, Fnatic, G2, Heroic, and others. After beating Big in the first round, Flipside met G2. They shamefully lost to the French, giving up an 11-4 comeback on Nuke. This, however, did not stop Merrick from making an ace, finishing the round with a hashish frag. We haven't really seen G2 play this match too often. Markolov in the same position we saw Waylander in, in not too long ago. He gets the double. We'll find the triple as well on NBK. And now it's all on Shux. And Kenny S. Shux goes down to 1 HP. Kenny S. falls to Markolov. And now Shux with the nade. He goes down. And Markolov with the ace. Smoke Criminal. A League Atlanta 2018 was the last major for Markolov as part of Flipside. The team was one of the first to leave the tournament, finishing the challenger stage with a score of 0-3. First rival of Igor and company was the Americans from Misfits Gaming, who simply destroyed our heroes at the overpass with a score of 16-4. The first side ended with a score of 14 when Markolov took one single round for CT when he won a 1-3 clutch. Six months after the failure at the major, Merrick will end his career when Flipside fails to pass the minor before the London Major. Even Markolov in a one versus three. If he sees Shazam, does he go for the kill there? He's got to find another player, manages to get a 2k, and now they dance around the pillar. Dev has the information, but Markolov has a clutch. Three headshots from him. No worse than simple. WestG used to be a big tournament where national teams fought for big prizes. It was like the World Cup, but among esports players. Thus, in 2017, Ukraine was represented by a very powerful team, Zeus. Markolov, Simple, Edward, and Bondi. It is not surprising that this five won the European Finals, beating Godsent in the Grand Final. This is how they took revenge on the Swedes for their unfortunate defeat in the group in the Bow 1 match on the Tain, in which, however, Merrick won an awesome clutch 1 in 3. Look how cool he played on the timer. Out. Doesn't matter. Twist finds a kill with the AWP and all on Markolov now. 15 seconds. Just has to stay alive and stop this bomb plant. Oh. Two kills in for Markolov. He might even find a third. The bomb's dropped on top of the train. He doesn't have to fight. But Doplin, he's rushing towards him, trying to find this kill. Markolov still hides. Three seconds left. He might be able to do it. And he does. That's the round for Ukraine off the back of time. A 1v3 for Markolov. Unfortunately, Team Ukraine did not go to China for the World Finals. Simple refused to participate due to personal reasons and other other players had problems with visas. In the end, the team withdrew from the tournament. The Killer Anchor ESWC was one of the most prestigious tournaments of the CS 1.6 era. It was on par with the WCG in terms of scale, prize money, and significance. For Navi, this was his second major victory after the legendary Intel Extreme Masters 4. At the French Championship, Born to Win Again met a Swedish team in the final, this time SK Gaming. And although the Ukrainians lost Dust 2, it was in this game that Markolov played a great game as an A support, preventing the Swedes from reaching the net. The 
the last hope. Even when Navi was already tearing up the international scene, they didn't forget about local Eastern European tournaments. The prize money wasn't as big as it is now, and to make good money, you had to participate in all possible tournaments. That's what the Born to Win won Intel Challenge Super Cup 7, a championship for Eastern European teams with a prize pool of $10,000. In the grand final, Markalov and company met again with Frag Executors, the legendary Poles who wanted to take revenge for their defeat at IEM Season 5. The match turned out to be very tense, and the last round of the match on Inferno gave us a very emotional highlight. Markalov was down 1-3, but he didn't lose his cool and brought it to a happy ending. That's all for today. What do you think about the highlights? Write about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and bell us. Good game.